When you are sick, you need a good ambience to pick your medicines. Maogola Farmers is here for you. Has human medicines for both retail and wholesale. Found in Sembable and Chiganga Z Town Council. Call us on 0200-908-184 Sembable or 0700-577-241 Chiganga Z. At Maogola Farmers, we serve with care. Okay, uh, good evening colleagues, good evening uh, to you all my viewers uh, on both YouTube and our TikTok channel. You're welcome to ask Dr. Uthman uh, and uh, like I've already said, today we are going to have a very short live, it's going to be very short, just 30 minutes, we have only 30 minutes here and therefore I will welcome questions from you people. Uh, so that I can answer you. Please be brief when, when you're asking. Just ask something straight away. And um, they should only be fertility questions, questions concerning fertility management, pregnancy, and so on. Those are things I'm interested in. All those are things I can really manage. But if you go on with other questions, I pressure and so on, I may not be able to answer you. So ask questions concerning the reproductive health and so on. So straight away, uh, you're welcome to ask Dr. Uthman YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe if it's your very first time to watch our channel, please subscribe. And uh, also you can also become a member of our channel. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you on uh, TikTok, uh, you're welcome and please share the live so that uh, it can reach to everyone and also always keep on tapping and liking the, 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 the the live so that uh, your friends can also join. So straight away, uh, let me go to question number one. And the question is saying, uh, Fifi is saying, good afternoon, doctor, I have a cyst. I have a cyst, how can I conceive? Yeah, now this is simple. If you have an, or a cyst, I don't know, but probably you're talking about an ovarian cyst because there are very many cysts we can talk about. But the commonest, I think, is an ovarian cyst, and you're likely to be asking about an ovarian cyst. An ovarian cyst shouldn't be a stumbling block for someone to conceive. Uh, therefore, if you have an ovarian cyst, there are still very many chances of you conceiving. Number one, if you treat the cyst, because these cysts are easy to treat. I've already said that cysts are curable. They are treatable and curable. First of all, if the cyst is below five centimeters, we encourage you that you take oral drugs. You take, you, I mean, you take drugs, medicines, okay? So pharmacological management can work on a cyst which is below five centimeters. Uh, then for those cysts above five centimeters, we do operation or we remove them. So those are the two methods which can be used for managing an ovarian cyst. And once the cyst is treated, pregnancy becomes inevitable, except if there is any other problem stopping you. And by the way, also, some, cysts, some small cysts may not affect someone uh, conceiving, because we've seen women conceiving with those small cysts. So I think that one is okay with you, that if you have a cyst, you can still conceive. There is no reason as to why you should not conceive. But, but the most important thing is treating the cyst. How are you going to treat, to treat the cyst? Uh, do either medical or surgical means you'll be able to conceive. Then we have uh, all these. MC, <clears throat> MC Ngozi is saying, what is the advice for someone with type 2 diabetes trying to get pregnant? Type 2 diabetes cannot stop you from conceiving. The, actually, the only challenge comes after conceiving, managing these diabetes. Okay, making sure that the uh, diabetes doesn't affect your fetus is the only problem. Otherwise, having diabetes will not stop someone from conceiving. A person with diabetes will conceive normally like any other person. Except there are those who have diabetes and they have high levels of estrogen in blood, which ends up uh, putting uh, down the levels of progesterone. That's the only problem which can happen. But if other than that, a person with type 2 diabetes will have to conceive normally. Therefore, if you fail to conceive, you have to just run tests like any other person to find out what is stopping you from conceiving, but diabetes may not stop you from conceiving. What diabetes can do is to cause complications during pregnancy of which those ones can still be managed uh, the way they present. 
uh, actually when you conceive while you're, you're, you're diabetic, your, 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 <coughs> your diabetes has to be managed. The sugar levels have to be managed and maintained in normal so that you can have a life baby. Uh, uh, Benjamin saying, good evening, doctor. I'm in a Nakata, hello, hello. Good evening, doctor. Why is that my menstrual aura is in, in form of nucleus? I don't know. What are you asking? What, what's the question about? I'm in a Nakata, repeat your question. I'm, I've not gotten it clearly. Please ask it very well. Grafted family saying, I was asking that I went to, in my periods, on four last, ma on four last month. But this month it has delayed, but I have of her. Your question is not complete, but I know you may be asking about a delayed periods. Delayed periods can be as a result of hormonal fluctuations. People have hormonal fluctuations, and those hormonal fluctuations can lead to, uh, to, uh, to, to delayed periods, to stress. Eh? Okay? So many people have stress, and if you have stress, um, you know, Actually, this, what, happen, what usually happens, most people really want to conceive. People want to conceive. And the moment they fail to conceive or they fail to, to really obtain what they are looking for, they get overstressed. And that stress will again cause hormonal fluctuations, which will lead to delayed periods or uh, issues with their periods. And, uh, and uh, also... Uh, having delayed periods may mean pregnancy. By the way, you can also do a pregnancy test to confirm that. But also, uh, if, if this persists, for example, if it persists for a period of uh, like three months, then you need to do fertility hormonal assay to find out who, uh, fertility hormonal assay and the pelvic ultrasound scan to confirm what is causing. Either if it, there are fibroids present in your uterus or it's uh, uh, low levels of progesterone causing that. Uh, then this one is saying, uh, <clears throat> Susie, baby, good evening, doctor. Can you list down for me various tests to perform to make sure I am fertile? All right. Number one, go and do a pelvic ultrasound scan. Number two, go and do a fertility hormonal assay. In a, the fertility hormonal assay, make sure that you do progesterone, estradiol, LH, FSH. Also do AMH, do T3, T4, and TSH. And also don't forget prolactin and testosterone. Uh, then uh, after that, of course, after that, go and do an HSG X-ray. That is, you'll have done at least something to call a fertility profile. Uh, Akideli, hi, Doc. Hi, I'm from Portugal. Say hi to those Portuguese. Akideli Adjibul from Portugal is saying, my wife is 46, and we have been looking for a child more, for almost 10 years. Uh -huh. And you're failing to get a child... Uh, uh, for 10 years, then what you're supposed to do is to do what they call fertility screening. Screen yourself, find out whether you're still fertile. Screen your woman, find out whether she's still fertile. Uh, if there is any problem, let the problem be uh, tackled, you will be able to conceive. Uh, Winnie, everyone is saying, I have watery discharge, please advise. If you have a watery discharge, you're supposed to go and do a high vaginal swab, confirm what is causing this watery discharge, take medicines. In most cases, it's candidiasis or vaginal candidiasis. It may be chlamydia, it may be trichomoniasis, uh, it may be um, vaginal uh, uh, bacterial vaginosis. All those ones can cause uh, discharges. But for if you say a watery discharge, because if you want to differentiate whether it's candidiasis, uh, chlamydia, trichomoniasis, or whatever, you must look at the color. Okay? I know you may say, I have a watery discharge, but that may not be the clear description of the discharge. Because for a watery discharge, it, we, we shall take it as a normal thing. But if the discharge is white, then we are thinking about candidiasis. If the discharge is, is yellow, all those discharges that are turning to green, then we look at the likes of chlamydia and trichomoniasis. Vagino, uh, bacterial vaginosis has a discharge which has a fishy smell. So there, there is a lot to do with that discharge. But the most important thing is to go and get examined. Because when you come, we are supposed to look at the discharge. We are supposed to do a vaginal examination. And this is where the problem is. A woman comes, is talking about a vaginal discharge, you're telling them to open, <laughs> to, to, to take off their knickers, and you see the discharge, they are like, ah, no, <laughs> you know, doctor, just know that I have a discharge, give me medicines. If, and, and this is what is bringing about uh, uh, resistance, drug resistance, 
These days, many people take people are taking medicines and medicines are not working. Why? Because the health workers, all the doctors are giving non-specific medicines. Because when you tell me you have a vaginal discharge, there are many causes. So most people look at the three causes. They look at the bacterial, the fungal, and the viral causes, all parasit parasitic causes. Now they'll end up giving you three types of drugs. You'll find that someone is getting an antifungal, those are the pessaries most people insert. They will give you antibiotics, two types of antibiotics and so on. And at the end of the day, when your problem is just fungal and you needed only an antifungal, okay? So that's why, that's the importance of doing a vaginal examination. To me, it's a must for you to do a vaginal, a, a physical vaginal examination when you have a discharge. And if the discharge is not clear, I'm not able to ascertain the exact cause of this discharge, then we do a high vaginal swab uh, uh, to, to find out the bacteria causing this. And that's when you get a clear treatment. This one is saying, uh, ask, uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, the question is running away. Musamba Vicky is saying, Hi, doctor, good evening. I feel always evening headache, but I tested the first week. I'm not pregnant. What's the problem? Evening headache, it, if it's not pregnancy, yes, of course, it's not that pregnancy brings about evening headaches. So if it's not pregnancy, then find out. It may, you may be having a malaria. You may be having a brucellosis. Okay? You may be having a typhoid. You may be having stress. You may be having hypertension or high blood pressure. You may be having blood sugar. So what you're supposed to do is to go to the hospital and check for other causes of headache. Okay? Check for other causes of headache. You may be having a problem with your brain. We may be dealing with a tumor somewhere, and we are only thinking about pregnancy. So you need to go and do those various tests to confirm what is causing that. Uh, this one is saying, Mommy, can I use Yoni Pearls for PID? No. Uh, Nansu Buga, Flavia is saying, Good evening, Doc. Why does my blood pressure come when I'm five months pregnant? pregnant? All right. Now, that is what we call preeclampsia. It means you are at risk of getting preeclampsia either. And preeclampsia is a condition whereby a woman's blood pressure rises when the baby reaches 20 weeks of amenorrhea. When your fetus, when your baby is 20 weeks of amenorrhea and then blood pressure rises, plus some other signs, it's not only blood pressure, there is also swelling, there is also a urine, a change in urine, but those are now doctor's tests after doing because when you come with that, we do a urine test to find levels of proteins in your urine. Now, that is blah, blah. But let's look at the, 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 the blood pressures going high. If the blood pressures go high at 20 weeks of amenorrhea, that is preeclampsia. And people with preeclampsia, uh, in, in, in other words, most causes of preeclampsia are uh, hereditary. You find that your mother had preeclampsia, all one of your siblings, all one of your great, great uh, relatives had a preeclampsia. So it is predisposed. There is a family predisposition of preeclampsia. But what is supposed to be, the most important thing is that when you get preeclampsia, when you get high blood pressure during pregnancy, it must be well managed. There is a clear video. There is a video, you check on one of my videos on YouTube talking about preeclampsia. I, I clearly explained it very well, how you can manage this and so on. So the most important thing is making sure that the blood, the, the, the blood pressures are normal. The pressure is normal. That is the most important thing. So any doctor will make sure that when you, your pressures go high during pregnancy, they are normalized. That is the most important thing, and that's what you should know. If normalizing the, 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 the pressures, that's when your baby will be safe. And time reaches when the baby has to be removed by the prematurely. Most uh, it happens when pressures have really persisted and the, it is now threatening the life of the mother. Okay, ha, Hikima, Hikima, good evening, doctor. I am PCOS patient and I've been getting pregnant, but always I have miscarriage in my first trimester. Now, if you have PCOS and you've been getting trimester, uh, first trimester uh, abortions or miscarriages, check that it, you're likely to be having low levels of progesterone. To, please do fertility hormone assay, specifically do progesterone levels test. You'll find out that you have low levels of progesterone and then you'll have to do the needful. <laughs> and that, that, because you have, you, you have to take the medicines, the likes of progesterone medicines, the likes of dofastone, microute, primarute, and ETC. 
you need them. Uh, I mean, look at it. My menstrual is always in form of mucus. Is it normal? If it's blood, if it's blood, even if it's uh, because what you're talking about, maybe you're saying it's sticky. Okay, it's sticky. That is okay. As long as it's blood, it's red. That is okay. Maybe if you're talking about mucus and you're talking about yellow stuff and so on, that would not, not be okay. Okay. Hello, head up. What finishes yeast infection? It keeps on coming. If you have a yeast infection or if you have a, that discharge and so on that keeps on coming even after taking medications, Please stop taking the medications. First, stop taking the medications for at least a full month. Allow the discharge to, persist, to, to, to stay there for at least a month. Then go and do a culture and sensitivity test. Do a culture and sensitivity test to find out exactly which microorganism is causing uh, 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 the, 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 is causing uh, the, the discharge. Because yes, you're talking about yeast infection, but it may not be yeast. How did you confirm that it is yeast? So what you're supposed to do is to do a culture and sensitivity. Sometimes you find there is also a superimposition of a bacteria and you need to treat the bacteria. So do a culture to find out the bacteria, fung, all the microorganisms responsible and do a sensitivity test to find which exact medicine you are supposed to take. So stop taking the medicines. Then um, Murikaji is Tijani saying, good afternoon doctor, watching from Nigeria. Say hi to those Nigerians. You people have qualified for the, world, uh, for the uh, round of 16 in the World Cup. Kudos to you. Akideri, Jubu, both, of, both to do the fertility screening. Yes, both of you should do. If you have an infertility case, the fertility screening should be done by both you, the man, and the wife. Both of you. Why? And, and this is a very big problem. Most times when... A, a, a couple fails to conceive when a couple fails to get a, when a woman fails to get pregnant all the blame all the blame comes to the woman as if it's only a woman that is responsible for that remember conception getting pregnant is a two thing you must have a sperm and an egg so any of them can have a problem but people only look at one side that is the woman inside especially for us in Africa they start calling them barren I've seen several times people coming and they're saying a woman has a problem, has a problem, you find the whole family is coming to you. That we married this woman, it is now two years, she's not giving birth. She's... When you do tests, you find that it is the man with a problem. You'll find that the man has a problem. The woman is very fertile. I <laughs> usually joke with them and say, allow this woman to go somewhere outside and see if she will not be able to conceive. So the problem is bilateral. Okay, and you both of you have to screen, have to test, find out your fertility potential, and then get treatment. Okay, then uh, we have uh, uh, okay, Rachel Nam Fuque is saying, My breasts are heavy and my nipples are paining. Am I pregnant or what? I don't know. I don't know because there are several causes of that. Number one can be pregnancy. Number two can be a sign of ovulation. Number three, it can be uh, a sign of an infection. You have mastitis. So first confirm. You can do a pregnancy test to confirm if you're pregnant. You can do an ovulation test to confirm if you're, it's your an ovulation. And if all that is normal, then go to the hospital. They do breast examination. Okay, we have less time left here. Clara Nchita, hi doctor, why my menstrual cycle is not stable? It keeps on changing. It is as a result of hormonal fluctuations. It is as a result of hormonal fluctuations. That's why your cycle keeps on changing. I want to bring one person to ask a question here. Who is this lucky person? Let me see. Yes, Miri, how are you and where are you calling from? Okay. 
Then we have uh, Nazifa Namusobia. Hello, doctor. I am from Iganga. I'm an Imau student. Do any SAIDs? Imau students. Hi. Um, say hi to all those people in Imau. Imau is Islamic Medical Association of Uganda. I was once part of it. Actually, I'm still part of it. I'm still part of it. So I'm, still, I'm part of you. Uh, do any SAIDs extend? Periods when you're approaching them, no. NSAIDs have no problem with periods. If if if, if periods are extended or if they are prolonged, uh, or if they are if you've skipped the days you're supposed to have periods, then it is likely to be something else causing that. Rachel Mfukumwe is saying. Am I having a problem with my network here? No. Okay. Rachel Mufukume is saying, I mostly have irregular periods. I went to the hospital and they said it's hormonal imbalance. That's okay. That, so that means if it's hormonal imbalance, you've forgotten to tell us which hormone exactly was having a problem. And because if we know the hormone that has a problem, then you get treatment. Uh, we have uh, this one, Shalong, he's saying, Hello, doctor, can injection of three-month family planning affect someone in terms of getting pregnant? Yes, that injection is called Dipoproivera. Dipoproivera, yes, Dipoproivera can affect your chances of getting pregnant. I have discussed, check in one of my videos here, we discussed about, uh, we discussed about, uh, uh, how long it takes, all the delays that happen after using family planning and what you're supposed to do. Check in one of my videos, we discussed this. Uh, today I told you I have, uh, I have less time and so I, I can't continue. Thank you so much for watching this live. We are going to be back next week or at 7 p.m. all 19 hours East African time. Uh, that, that time around, I, I will be giving you a full hour and I'll be able to answer most of your questions. Otherwise, thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell in order to be notified of any important video we upload. Also, check on it.next, check on it.next to show you those various things concerning iTech, the money behind my camera. Thank you so much. Good night. God bless. When you are sick, you need a good ambience to pick your medicines. Maogola Farmers is here for you. Has human medicines for both retail and wholesale. Found in Zimbabwe and Chiganga Z Town Council. Call us on 0200 908 184 Zimbabwe or 0700 577-241 Chigangazi At Maogola Farmers, we serve with care. Welcome to Bikoff Medical Center, located in Maskasi and Sembabli Town Council. We have a dedicated team of health professionals ready to serve with love and care. We offer our range of services a diagnostic laboratory, ultrasound scan, dent services, maternity and surgical services, physiotherapy, information call us on 0759-54-1708 Masaka and 0759-54-1703 Zimbabwe. Bikoff Medical Center, we treat good health.